Good morning, folks, or good day, as actually, depending on where you are. We'll give uh, folks a couple of minutes here. What? <laughs> Did I miss something? Okay. All right, we've doubled our audience here. It's always interesting these time these uh, time challenges. Hello there, Ralph. What part of the world are you even in? Where in where in the world is Carmen uh, Squalachi? Does it matter? <laughs> I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm in Italy, so C E T. Very cool. All right. We got Chue. Great. Okay. Um, let me actually pull this up here. Uh, is that what I wanted to grab? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. So the I wasn't sure if Niaz was going to make it today uh, for to cover his uh, uh, key management stuff. So uh, it, he didn't get on the agenda, and I pinged him. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Uh, the main item we have on the agenda today is the stuff we've been talking about uh, on the prototype. Uh, if you remember, several weeks ago we were talking about how we wanted to kind of build something and learn a little bit. We we have lots of people coming in with their expertise in different directions. Uh, and we were kind of, you know, making the analogy of you're building this house and you have lots of skilled labor coming in and they just want to do their thing, but they don't know where to do their thing in the bigger picture. Uh, so I was kind of using the analogy of, um, in fact, let me, uh, uh, out, uh, Gaudi in how he's created some of his sculptures or not sculptures, uh, I guess they are sort of sculptures uh, where he created a model and that helped people interact and figure out where they can plug in. So for instance, Niaz has been focused on the key management portions. He doesn't necessarily know as much about um, the images and, and you know artifacts and so forth, but he knows the key management scenario is really well. So he's been driving that effort. Um, likewise, we've been talking about signatures and then other things with tops. So we wanted to be able to kind of put, put this piece in place and then we'll keep on iterating. And as we get more and more through it, we'll learn more um, and go from there. Justin and I were joking, uh, Cormac and I were just the other day about building out the bathroom uh, for this house. We don't necessarily know what the whole thing looks like. And uh, it was like, it doesn't have a bidet. It's like, I didn't know we needed one. So now we can talk about putting one in. Um, so just kind of give an example of that. So let me uh, share my screen here. Um, so we've put out this PR um, that is that kind of next iteration. We, we had the original one, uh, which just kind of talked about the process. Well, we originally had the scenarios that we've been talking about for offline management and so forth, and I'll walk through those. Um, and then we talked about how we wanted to build out this model so we can kind of build and learn and have something to discuss upon. Uh, so this PR here talks about uh, the workflow that we've been talking about, that in a build environment outside of any public registry, it's in some vendors, some projects, environment, whatever that might be, they can create everything from a Docker image to an SBOM of that image to maybe packaging the source and bundle it and sign those individually uh, or assign the collection of the index. And 
actually that alone is something that we that stirred up some good conversations so we'll talk uh, about that uh, wherever that thing's built it's built by a certain entity it would be signed by that entity and from their their registry which is like the original registry where it's created they could push it to a public registry um, and then as users use it they could pull it to their private registry because we've been talking quite a bit around you know best practices are always about pulling them into your own registry uh, even though it's public content so this way you have your own lifecycle control management your security boundaries your isolation from dns as we've seen uh, and you can deploy it in your environment and in that environment you are more than likely going to put secondary keys on you know that says regardless of what happened upstream this i only trust stuff in my environment and i'll talk a bit about this in the scenario section we have down below so uh, the prototype uh, focuses on the stuff that we put in the NV2 uh, org or the notary project org, where we have uh, the distribution uh, spec that's there. Um, we'll come back to that late. Well, rephrase them. We go in order. We've actually numbered these things. So we have this NV2 client, which can do signing and verification. That's all it does. It doesn't do push and pull. Its job for this prototype is just do signing and verification. They could sign any OCI artifact and it would generate a signature. And using the ORS client, we can push and pull uh, things to a distribution registry. Uh, the, like I said, the distribution registry portions will come later. Uh, we've been working on some stuff there, but we really wanted to focus on the signature aspect first, because we know we can push and pull stuff to a registry. Uh, so for this scenarios, and this, this is the interesting one that's kind of been trying to find the balance of some of these things. Um, so we have the scenarios where basically we're going to, for now, we're focusing on an X509 cert. Uh, the way she way uh, has built this, which is really cool, is that there's a, a couple of different ways you can do uh, verification objects. Uh, a signature is one of them. Uh, in fact, X509 is one choice. Uh, we, we had a GPG in there, but it seemed like that was adding more confusion. So we pulled that out for now. The, the point was we can do multiples. And uh, the belief is that's where we were bringing in something like tough as well. So in this first phase, we're focused on just a core signature and we'll go through this experience here. So the things like with Docker Hub makes it pretty interesting is that you have this public content that is uh, certified. Well, sorry, you have this public content and there's these two categories. There's the certified, certified content, which today is really a badge but we were trying to think like, how could we make that more robust and more trusted? Um, and then you have this community stuff that we don't want to limit, uh, which also, which has the wide range of some of the best projects in CNCF to who knows what that is and in potentially bad content. Um, so there's this wide range and we don't, it's really hard sometimes to judge that range other than voting and so forth. Uh, but we definitely wanted to distinguish this, uh, between the two. So the public content would actually be, sorry, the certified content could actually be signed in addition to the vendor. It might be signed by Docker themselves uh, as part of the Docker Hub certified content. So the idea is that uh, in the public content, uh, we're using the same Hackme Rockets one, uh, where they're building from public content, uh, which they might have in their registry, um, and then they, uh, but in their environment that they run their code, the only trust stuff that's from Docker IO and Acme Rockets. In fact, that's part of their build process that we'll go, walk through here. So the user discovers some certified content they wish to acquire. They copy the URL um, and they pass it to their Docker run command. So in this case, it's Docker IO. And I, I've shown that just for the clarity of, of course, we don't need to specify that. Uh, Hello world latest. The user already has the Docker IO certificate, certificate uh, enabling all certified content from Docker Hub. And I'm totally hand waving here on how they acquire the certificate uh, because what we've said is we really want to let the key management folks kind of focus on what they want to do there. So we're hand waving that for now. Uh, one very just justifiable thought, and I'm totally making this up, is that because this is the actual Docker client, maybe, and it's working with Docker Hub, maybe it can acquire the Docker Hub cert. I, I'm not sure I buy all of the security aspects. I'm not even gonna try to defend those right now, honestly. Uh, but the idea is that there is this experience where um, that cert is trusted and there's, uh, like, there's no TOEFL model in this case. 
So because that company has locked them down to only allowing these two uh, certificates, these keys to be used, the image runs and verification passes just fine. Now, the secondary to one uh, is the user discovers some content, same thing. Uh, there's this awesome network monitor they th that thinks, looks like they think they want to use. Again, they copy the URL, they try to run it, but it fails because in Acme Rockets, they've got trust required and even the parameter name I'm just making up, um, and, you know, enabled and the, as a policy and they don't have this Wabbit Networks uh, certificate. So when they try to run, it'll fail um, because it just, it's not allowed. So the user can, to say, and again, experienced here aside, you know, the user can either disable the trust required key, assuming their enterprise would allow that policy, or they have to figure out how to acquire that key. Um, and there's lots of ideas of how they might do that. Again, we're going to ignore that for now. So the user acquires the Wabbit's key. They decide that that is a, an entity that they want to trust. They save it in whatever the local store means. Again, hand waving on key management. But now they can do the Docker run of this thing because it, it's, they do trust that entity. Uh, so I'm going to pause there for a second and I realize I kind of skipped on the agenda. So I wanted to go through the scenarios, including the private registry uh, scenario. And then I was going to hand off to Shiwei to actually go into the detail of uh, the signature design. Uh, hi, Steve. Uh, so yeah. are you sharing your screen because I cannot see it? I am. Are people, I never actually paused to ask. Did anybody not see my screen? No one saw your screen, Steve. <laughs> All right, it is 7 a.m. Uh, but you were charming. <laughs> Thank you. All those key movements. I, I was there thinking, Steve's decided to do this just by talking without any screen sharing. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys see my screen? Uh, well, you still can't see my screen, can you? Yeah, we can now. Okay. I'm not getting the border. I had the border that whole time. Do you see just one screen? Just the, the NV2 prototype thing? Yes. Okay, all right, whatever. I must have gotten some update, I don't even know, whatever. So what I just walked through was this experience here, this picture here where the NV2 client signs an artifacts, generates a signature and the ORS client pushes it. And this is basically the uh, content of the readme of that PR. So uh, I went through this section here uh, and the only thing I was gonna do, actually, did I even cover this one? No, so actually, okay, that's fine. Because now uh, that I've done sharing my screen and walk through the whole thing, I was gonna hand off to Shiwei anyway. Uh, any questions on the scenarios before we drill into the, the signature stuff itself? Hi, Steve, I do have a question. Uh, I thought earlier, um, uh, I, I was, when I was in the meeting, you mentioned that one key scenario is uh, you know, keep the signature valid uh, as, uh, you know, when it's moved from reg one registry to another. Is that still within the scope? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, in fact, where did I, Shui, where did I put that content? Is it in? I could have sworn I read that. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. It's in the signature specification goals. Um, so here, so uh, now that I can share my screen and everybody can see it. Uh, so we have offline, so I, on the signature specification page, and this is the one where I want Chi Wei to drive, um, but I'll just do the goals to answer your question, Daniel, and then uh, I'll get it out of the way. So offline signature creation. So in fact, when he creates the signature, we're actually doing it without a registry even in the picture. Uh, and there was an interesting thing around images that we've uh, at least temporarily filled the gap. I say templates because I'm, I'm not sure where the container D stuff lands in the space. Uh, so with the signature created, you can persist it with an OCI artifact enabled registry. Um, and artifact signature is copied within and across. And when I say within, it's within a registry where you can go from repo A to repo B, so dev to staging to production, um, or from a dev registry to a production registry, or from Docker Hub to a private registry, and so forth. Um, we want to support registry, public registry acquisition of content where the public content may be, uh, may public registry may host certified content 
uh, as well as public content so or non-certified. That's the community stuff that I was just referring to. Uh, we'll support private registries where public content is copied into um, and uh, the new content is originated within. So within my uh, Acme Rockets company, I've got lots of secure rocket technology that I don't want that IP public. So I'll keep that in our private registry. Uh, and air-gapped environments where the originating registry of content is not accessible. Um, we also want to support multiple signatures. Uh, so if you, what I was just referring to is the, the, the Wabbit Networks has their own key that they build themselves. They then host it on Docker Hub. And at first, there are community content. So they actually didn't get a second key. So we walked through that scenario where the company that wanted it had to go get the Wabbit Networks key. And then eventually it became Docker certified. So now there's a Docker IO key on it as well. So it's, it's got that additional trust. But when I pull it into my environment, I actually don't trust anything other than the Acme Rockets key. Um, so there is that multiple signatures. And the last one here is maintain the original artifact digest and tags um, so that when the DevOps workflow that says deploy, uh, network monitor version v1 that uh, I don't have to change that tag or its digest depending on the choice I make to move it through the workflow the signatures will always be uh, associated with that tag and digest so we're not you know changing along the way so I have a quick question is um is revocation included in the signature model so that if something were to happen to um one of the private keys that you trust is there like a way built in to kind of revoke trust in that key? Yeah, so key revocation, again, is in that key management portion. So uh, I know Niaz has been working on that. There is, a, a, so I'm, I'll defer to them on that one. But yes, we definitely want to keep that in mind. Or not in mind. We want to keep that as a very core scenario. And the only reason I didn't put it here is I'm just kind of leaving it in the whole key management stuff. I believe Niaz is PR on their uh, key management scenarios covers that. Okay, yeah. Any questions before I hand it off to Shiwei? I'm sure you'll have lots of questions for him. Shiwei, you wanna take it? Uh, you wanna share your screen and just walk through your signature design? Let me see. Uh, okay, so let me share my screen. Okay. Okay, so can you see my screen now? Yes, let's all confirm we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so here's the thing, here's the, uh, the proposal for the uh, Notre V2 signatures. Uh, so basically we can sign uh, uh, a manifest based uh, things like the OCI image index, OCI image manifest, uh, Docker image manifest list, uh, Docker image manifest, and uh, uh, and we can sign all, everything and offline. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty simple that we can generate some uh, uh, X file and insert and the keys. For, this, for example, uh, here we uh, generate keys for the, uh, for the registry example.com and uh, the key is the example key and the third is the example start. And uh, the certificate uh, will be something like this one. So it has two parts. The first part is the, the actual content. So in uh, this scenario, uh, it is the, uh, the expiry time, not before, and issue add, uh, digest. Uh, digest is the manifest digest, and the, the size is the manifest size. And uh, uh, the EXCP means expiry. So uh, as the uh, signer, I want this signed content to be expired after a certain time, and of, of course, this kind of things cannot be valid before a certain time. Uh, the time is the Unix uh, epoch time. And uh, uh, here's the volume called uh, the issue at. Uh, actually, it's the time that the signer sees this, uh, uh, this manifest. And uh, there's also a property called references. That's the, uh, the original references of this uh, tagged for this 
manifest uh, that is claimed by this signer. And uh, uh, in the signature part, uh, currently we only support the X509 uh, type. Uh, it has a signature and the chain of the X509 certificates. And it's used the signing algorithm of the uh, RS256, uh, which is the IEC plus the SHA256. So basically, uh, only uh, the, uh, the people who has the key for the third of the register.example.com can sign the content with the reference uh, of the domain name of the register.example.com. So if you have uh, if you have no third, you cannot say okay this uh, this manifest comes from uh, this original tag. Uh, if you have uh, a set of registry.otherexample.com, you cannot sign it, but you can sign something like registry.anotherexample.com slash hello world or something else. Uh, so uh, this file is just a file. That means uh, it can be stored on your file system or it can be stored uh, in onto a uh, OCI com uh, com uh, uh, compatible uh, registry uh, via a uh, OCI artifact. So in this case, uh, this is a command showing that we can use ORAS to uh, push the uh, signature to the remote registry as an artifact. Uh, of course, the, uh, uh, the signature is stored as a manifest config where the manifest uh, has no layers. And that's the details of the signed part and uh, the signature part. And you, I just give you a few uh, seconds to read through. So this Sorry, could you just paste the URL of this page into the chat? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, where's the chat? When you're screen sharing, it's a little hidden. Hover over the screen shared one. Oh, it's here. The bar at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> just look for the screen uh, chat session yeah. there. Or let me, yeah. I can actually paste I've it. sent out the uh, URL. Ah, perfect. Thanks. Yeah. And here's the example of the x nice signature. And uh, uh, if you don't wish to show the uh, certificate chain in your certificate, uh, I mean, in your signature, uh, you can use a key ID instead. Yeah. Uh, any questions? So I, I will say, I, I apologize. I did say last week we were going to get out the PR early um, so that people had a chance to review early and not assume they can review it on the weekend. I didn't get it out as early as I wanted. So um, we're obviously not looking for final feedback today. We want people to have a chance to digest everything. I mean, look at this at, and and the registry protocol enhancements that are somewhere else in the documentation. This is pretty close to where I've ended up with as far as the design goes. But I'm fairly skeptical that this can just be enhanced or generalized to encompass stuff or anything like that without too much structural change. If we are going with this, I think we are to an extent committing to a design. A design I like, but still I just want to put it out there. So just to reiterate what I think I heard you talking about, Milos, was the, um, this is a sketch, like we don't expect this to be the final. This is like putting the bathroom design out and Justin comes over and says, but where's the bidet? I'm like, oh, we didn't think about it. So where do we need bidets? Ralph acknowledges we absolutely have to have bidets. So where's the bidet that belongs in here? 
um, one of the things that came up was some encoding conversations because we, we focused mostly on the content of the signature in this one. We know that there's a long standing conversation with Canonical Jason and others, and we've been reaching out to Trishank and Radu for some of the stuff they did with CNAB to understand how they you know, were dealt with it there. Um, we've talked about it in coding and some other stuff. Um, uh, Derek had given some feedback that honestly, I, I had to record it and um, we, we need to incorporate that feedback so we can bring that forward as well. Um, but what would so I wouldn't view this as any kind of final design yet. It's like I said, it's that sketch to facilitate that conversation. But Milos, what what is what are you you were saying something there that you felt like we we're missing already, or what was the concern? Not really a concern from my point. Uh, just once you have a CLI or a model that works with individual files like this, I imagine that. Um, modifying is, um, this to also support or somehow incorporate or abstract the tough model, especially the recent versions that have a single parallel registry state that is signed all over. It's just not going to be all that easy. So that we are basically committing to a direction by starting with this prototype, whether you, we want to or not. Yeah, I, I guess I just kind of reinforce that we're, we're not done yet. We kind of think about it as a phase one and we'll do more. We don't expect anybody to start using this yet um, other than to say, hey, where, where's the bidet? Uh, you know, wh where else, what else do we need? So for instance, the encoding was one of the things that came up that we want to be able to, uh, that we just need to digest a little bit and, and put, you know, put that feedback in. Um, I, I would say that as far as like a, a notary v1 or Docker content trust, we've said from the beginning that this is a breaking change. We're not trying to incorporate that. We don't have enough usage of the old one that says we have to ha absolutely support that for the registries that do support our Docker content trust that can stay there as long as they want um, for customers to move over. We in ACR, we, we follow this carrot and uh, stick model. You know, we, we don't try to, deprecate something and force people over. We try to provide a new feature and the new feature should be so much better that customers move over, self-select. And then only after the majority of customers have moved over and there's always some remnant um, because the remnant is, doesn't care about the new scenarios. They've automated some tooling around it. It's not important. Then we come back and we contact them and do the stick kind of thing. So my hope is whatever we do with Notary V2 in the final design with the bidet, that customers will opt in themselves and we won't have any, you know, then they'll re-sign, if you will, the, their content they were using Docker Content Trust and Notary V1, they'll re-sign it with MV2, Notary V2. Um, and, you know, they'll make a, a smooth transition over. You also mentioned something about the registry. There, there is some stuff in there about the registry APIs. We're still early on that. We're, we're even debating amongst ourselves. So uh, hopefully we can get to that next week. If not, it might be the following week, but we certainly want to get more feedback on there. Uh, I, we just don't have enough of the, the thoughts written down to have a good discussion over it. So um, that's why we're, we're not ready to kind of delve into that part. We've got a bit of it teased in here just to get the ideas out there. Daniel, we, you, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was talking to another guy in a, a chat window, but uh, uh, um, I mean, in this uh, 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 JSON uh, object, there's a reference uh, which has the host name, right? So when you move this to another registry, the URI of the you know the artifact will change. So how does this still be valid? because the host name has changed and it's moved to another registry. Uh, great question. Um, so from a scenario, and this is one that actually was pretty cool that we, uh, that we were discussing. Let me just, I'll uh, reshare it so we can, I will actually make sure I'm sharing it. So I believe that's sharing it now, right? 
Can everybody see? Uh, okay, yes. I got a thumbs up from Ralph. Yeah. I got a visual thumbs up. So this one was an interesting one that came up. And I, at first, I was kind of digesting what the, the guys had come up with as well. The idea is that if, uh, and I, I was debating on using Example or Acme Rockets and, or, or Wabbit Networks or whatever. Um, so imagine this was, well, I'll just use Example. So Example.com is that community of content that pushes up to Docker Hub. And now I pulled it from Docker Hub. It's totally valid that it's from Docker Hub. All it's saying is that this has some original uh, content associated with example.com, wabbitsnetwork.com. And I can get it from anywhere. There's nothing that stops where I get it from. What's really interesting about this though, is I promote this from example to Docker Hub. I now pull it into my org, the Acme Rockets org. In the Acme Rockets org, I can now uh, sign, uh, well, I take it, I scan it, I run some unit and verification tests against the thing and I decide that this content is actually good for my environment. So now it's certified for my environment. So now I'll give it a secondary or it might even be a third because there's example then Docker, but then there's an Acme Rockets key that I put on this. There's a whole nother signature object. This, remember this, is, this object doesn't expand. There's a secondary signature object that now has Acme Rockets, registry.acmerockets.io um, example latest. And now in my environment, if I go all the way back up to, to here, so this example here goes to Docker, I bring it to mine. In my environment, I put another signature on it that says this is Acme Rocket signature. And it'll have it registry at Acme Rockets dot I, I, I something um, and or dot something. And now in my environment, my OPA or whatever policy agent I want to use will say, I will only deploy content that has the Acme Rockets key. And it will only deploy content that came from the same registry that I want to secure. So it, there would be another signature object that says registry.acmerockets.hello, uh, sorry, dot com slash hello world. And I should put more readme content out there to explain that. There doesn't even need to be a separate signature. The client, yeah, which is already somehow configured to have a set of trusted public keys can also have a set of mappings that say for this project, this must be example.com slash hello world. And if it doesn't match the upstream registry would be re rejected. So you can have end -to -end verification with mir mirroring without too much extra overhead. You're absolutely right. I, and I'm sorry, I skipped the obvious one. If you remember back here, uh, here in this example, the, cu the customer is set up to accept anything from Docker.io or acmerockets.io. So, and let's say they're public content. Uh, let's say this is Ac the Wabbit Networks and that, so sorry, I'm having a hard time trying to explain what should be clear. Uh, yes, whatever search they want, if they want to accept the public cert from uh, uh, Wabbit Networks to in their production environment, that is totally valid. I was trying to explain the scenario where there's an extra cert that you can put for your limit because in the case, in that case, the uh, this URL when it comes from Wabbit Networks or uh, in this case, well, in this case, here's the third that actually is Acme Rockets. Um, you can put you whoever signed it puts the registry name that they want on it. Daniel, did that make sense, or did I just confuse it by bouncing around too much? Yeah, I think it makes sense to me, but I I don't recall the detail of Tough, but I think this is a different model from what Tough does, right? Do we have any you know, maintainer of Tough to comment? Because I think this is something that Tough believes, you know, has, a f I would say it's flawed. So they make all this uh, hierarchy stuff to solve some problem. I, I don't recall the details of Tough, but I, I think, um, you know, in some uh, uh, session of Tough, they mentioned this model is flawed or problematic. Or well, I think that, um one concern that Tap has is that if something like acnerockets.io was compromised, 
um, how would that affect the security of the system? Because if, if the system's trusting um, that this came from this server, if that server is compromised, you then lose the um, that integrity. Um, so you need to make sure that there's like other aspects of it as well, so that you make sure that the signature um, can't be compromised if the um, repository is compromised, basically. So um, whatever key is used to sign these files, I think this, this might get into the key management, but whatever key is used to sign these files, if that is also stored on this Acme Rockets um, server, then a single server compromise then um, gets rid of the security of the system, um, which would be the concern there, I think. Okay. So yes, we, this, doesn't, this isn't the tough uh, model at this point. This is what we call phase one. Um, we, as we've been going through this over the last several weeks, one of the things we've been discussing is the, the struggle of, there was some stuff around tough requiring that the, or the, the requiring, the assumption is the client is that secondary, has some metadata on it that's a secondary validation um, and it to support the rollback problem. We're not trying to solve the rollback problem in this particular prototype. Mm -hmm. This is, it's a pure signature. It's a trust that the signature, is, the keys are, are valid until they're revoked. Um, so it's more pivoted on, I don't want to say it's more pivoted on the private uh, registry scenario, but it's the ability to move stuff into private registries. So this shows that how we could sign something, have a key associated with it and move it across environments. As we get more of this figured out and you know, in those details, we want to be able to go back and address the security and usability aspects of TUF related to registries. We do want to support that secondary verification, but in the container space, we can't assume the client has some previous state. We refer to it as uh, the ephemeral clients, where every time I start up a new environment in the serverless uh, container space, that there is no previous state on there. There has to be some acquisition of keys and acquisition of to, to validate, and we want to dig into that more uh, to make sure we can get both the security and the usability of tough to figure to fit into this. And that'll be part of the phase two work. Steve, if I may. Yeah, please. So uh, I, that makes that explanation makes perfect sense to me. Uh, the thing that I'm wondering is that without the assumption that is also not in scope for the prototype currently being placed somewhere that, um, the question of an incompleteness of where we are right now will be abstract. So people will come into the project, go out of the project for a moment, and they'll come back in and they won't really know what this addresses and doesn't address. So I think it might be really helpful, like what you said, where like it's not in scope for this step of the prototype, right? I think it would be really helpful if we actually documented what that um, situation was, that use case was, and said that this is an open issue for future phases that, that, that we, you know, let's draw a line around that whole scenario so that we don't get distracted by what this doesn't do and focus on what it does do. Does that make sense? No, it makes perfect sense. I was just making a note that we should, we, we've had some of the, we've had all the scenarios written down. I can't remember the exact numbers, then we'll have the uh, key management scenarios. I think mm -hmm. probably creating some kind of grid that shows here's what we're doing in phase one, here's what we're doing in phase two, here's what left, and we don't know what phase three, four, or five might be yet, uh, but sure. we know that we have these open issues that we want to solve. That, that's a great way to, communi uh, to communicate that. Um, I'll, I'll volunteer to help you out with uh, such a matrix, because I think that would be for people who aren't here every single week uh, that come in and go, and of course we're all very you know, busy uh, with the entire world right now. Uh, that would be super, super helpful for people to understand like what phase, what has been tackled, what is still not addressed and things like that. I think that would be good. So I'll, I'll volunteer for that help. Sweet, thanks. Makes perfect sense. Anybody else? I was looking for the chat session. I explained to Shui where to get it, but now I can't and find it. You have to stop sharing to get, oh, there it is. It's the orange one popped up right there. 
I just put in the hack MD link in there because I noticed people we we don't have any notes or even who's here. So please sign yourself in there so we can uh, help there. Any other? Uh, it's got to be other questions. It can't be that simple. Or does people just need more time to read through, which is perfectly fine. Actually, from my perspective, I think I need time to read through the the specific details, but the fact that clarity on what you're trying to achieve here and what isn't being achieved is a great step forward, I think. So that makes it possible for us to focus precisely on what is here. So not just write up the things that Daniel was saying to be more crisp about what I was trying to explain, but also put this table in which I, I'll definitely take your volunteering of to say, sure. here's the list of things and here's where we're at now and what will come later. Yeah, I think it, it also helps because uh, it, makes, it makes it clear the progress that we intend to have through uh, the work that we do. And um, that I think will help everybody feel a lot more comfortable at how we're addressing every single situation and what isn't addressed ex explicitly. So then the things that aren't addressed explicitly at any point in time become very clear subjects that you can discuss as opposed to, gosh, was that addressed or did we just forget or, you know, things like that. Sounds good. So we, we do have a little time left. Um, one of the things we said is if there's some time, we can walk through what, we, what we've been iterating on the experience. Uh, and the experience has been like this loop. It's hard to kind of come up with this design without having the NV2, uh, like a NV2 client experience that generates it. Um, so the, the one thing that I'd actually say is it, for people to kind of take a look at this is the one area, this is the signature object that we um, are creating. It's actually a formatted version of the signature object to be clear. Uh, normally it's non-formatted, no white space, and that's part of the canonical conversation we need to drill into. But uh, we also got some feedback that, you know, basically having this even split and encoded in a way so that you can retrieve the information, um, that the decoding of it doesn't create opportunities to hack into it. So anything along those lines would be great feedback too. Um, for that though, or not for that. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing and let Shiwei pick up if you wanted to walk through the NV2 client experience just to kind of get a feel uh, for that interactive experience. Yeah, sure. Uh, just let me share my screen. And while it's early for me on West Coast, it's late for Shiwei. So we're going to give him some patience for whatever he types. Okay, so this is shared. That's good. Okay, so so you can see this uh, window, right? Yep. Yep, that's good. And uh, the first thing first, that is we have to generate the case for the uh, X419 certificate. And this is copied from the, uh, the Irving2 uh, documentation. So just let me uh, uh, send out the link for you guys. Um, oh, where's the chat window? <laughs> <laughs> it's the top one in your screen share. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see that, yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I generate it. Uh, next step is to uh, just let me uh, have a hello world structure here, and let me create a doc file to uh, uh, to create an image. So from Alpine, uh, just do a CMD echo hello world. Very simple one, and then we do a Docker build. Uh, dash T, hello, and here we go. And uh, we can do a Docker run here. Hello, hello world. And later, uh, we uh, so to sign it, we have to generate the um, generate the manifest for this uh, image uh, because Docker. Uh, 
does not uh, store the manifest uh, in the system when you build it, it's only generated when you push it. So uh, I created a, uh, a Docker a CLI plugin to generate the manifest. Uh, so uh, just let me send out the link for the, uh, the tool I have. So here's a link. So uh, when, uh, if you have the uh, doc generated plugins installed, you can generate, uh, generally do this, doc generate, uh, generate ma uh, manifest, uh, hello, and uh, uh, output it to a manifest, .json file. So you can cut it with a JQ here. So this so, was the conversation you, you guys might have heard a couple of weeks ago where we were um, having this conversation of where the manifest should cr be created, stored, saves, and what the formatting of it will be. So um, for now, uh, Chiwei just built this manifest generation tool, which is pretty cool. And we'll yeah. incorporate that later. Uh, what should be in the manifest generation and signatures going forward later on, you know, as part of a future conversation. Yeah. So uh, this manifest will be exactly the same as the one uh, that the Docker uh, push will be uh, pushed to the registry. Okay, so next, uh, let me do a LV2 sign. Sign dash M uh, X file and I, oh, let's support the small key, okay. And with the key, uh, which is the example uh, key, and uh, uh, the third is the example dot third. And uh, uh, we can specify the expiry time, um, like uh, one year, that is 8,760 uh, hours. And uh, we can specify the, uh, the references, uh, like a registry, what do you call uh, is in here, so registry example, uh, slash maybe it called hello world, slash latest, or 3.0, and a file here, a manifest file. And I think that's all. And of, and of course, uh, let me output it to uh, signature.json. So when it's signed, it outputs the digest of the uh, manifest. So let me do uh, cat sick, it's the signature. Uh, it's not human readable, so let me pass it to JQ. So it, that's the, how the uh, signature looks like. So uh, what, if you, uh, if, what if you try to uh, sign a uh, image uh, that is not from the retreat example.com, uh, you will have this error. So the certificate is only valid for the registry.example.com, it's not valid for registry2.example.com. Okay. And of course you can sign without any references. I just let me remove that. And uh, the expiry date is also uh, uh, optional. And uh, So uh, it just signs the uh, digest and uh, the size without any uh, other references or expiry date like that. But it has an issue, issue date. Okay, so let me sign the original one. Okay. To verify it, you type the RB to verify. Uh, and uh, of course, I need to uh, specify the third for the, uh, I mean, the root third for the, uh, uh, for the signature, because it's a, it is a self-signed uh, signature. Uh, if it's not self-signed, it is, for example, it's a, a, a CA uh, a gener uh, that is 
uh, uh, the certificate from the, the system PKI, then you don't need to pass any certificate to it. Okay, and also uh, the manifest for, uh, the, the signature file and the manifest file. And, and it verifies. Um, a successful uh, verification is outputs the digest of the uh, manifest and also the return uh, value of the uh, uh, process is zero. And uh, that's the stunning process of uh, the uh, normal OV2 one. And uh, uh, in, in some cases, you don't want to uh, store the certificate in the X, uh, in the SIG file, uh, so you just want to have a key ID instead. So in this in that case, let me seek to and uh, remove the third part and its size, and uh, of course you can verify it. Let me let me catch the SIG2 first. Yeah, the signature with the uh, key ID for the cert. And uh, let me uh, verify it. Verify uh, dash C cert. Example, oh, sorry, it's example cert. And file uh, manifest. Also take the, uh, the signature file. And it verifies. So uh, let me try other thing. Uh, let me sign something uh, without cert, uh, and uh, but signs to uh, another registry, for example, registry2.example.com. Uh, in that case, because uh, the cert is not passed to the NV2 sign, so uh, the domain name is cannot be verified at the signing time. Okay, so I sign it to store in the stick dot file. Uh, let me verify it. Verify, I see the cert and oh, example cert and the signature file is stick .json, and the manifest file is the manifest file. And it fails with return value of one and saying that the certificate is only valid for the uh, registry.example.com, uh, it's not for the registry2.example.com. So, uh, so that's the Shui? local signing and verification. Shui, um one thing I was just following, I think I see what the difference is, but can originally when you try to sign with registry2 because the cert was only for registry.example.com, the yeah. signing failed. How did you get that to sign this time? Uh, because I don't provide the uh, the certificate at the signing signing part, so there's no dash C here. So you just provided the key, not the certificate. Yeah. So so it, because without the certificate, uh, the MV2 does not know the domain name of the uh, certificate, so it cannot verify at the signing time. Gotcha. But you can verify it at like this. This uh, is an example where you'd still catch it on verification. Yeah. So just, okay, so just let me uh, sign it, sign it again using the, uh, using the proper key and the proper domain name here. Sign it, this one and verify it, it verifies. Okay, uh, so do you have a question at the moment? Just, we, we want to be really careful to always appreciate everybody's style of communication. So by all means, you know, Slack, uh, issues, uh, feedback on the issues is also awesome. So whatever works for you guys. Okay, uh, if no questions, let me continue. 
Okay. So oh, actually, Shu, oh. hold on. Uh, I just noticed a comment. A major concern for me is that the verifier, the verify step must at least allow and preferably direct default to verifying the reference against the expected value, prevent trial, trivial substitutions, and attack. But just take a look at the notes there. An attacker. Oh, okay. So uh, you're actually asking about the versioning thing. Is that kind of the root of your question? I think I've been precise. Uh, <laughs> the way this was demoed, uh, the certificate is matched against the host name or maybe the repository, but there not needs be needs to be something that enforces the whole the full identity, including versions of the images. I'm not no, very that's a great question. in replacing images like the latest tag, but if a client asks for a three two, the client needs to get needs to get three two. Uh, Sheila, can you bring up the full signature example, or just scroll up? You've actually got it in your output there, where you've got. Um, uh, no, uh, I, I know that the signature format uh, allows it. It's just the verification implementation currently doesn't. No, that's fair. So remember what we're trying to do here, and this is like the rollback scenario you could say is not in scope for this phase one. What we're no, it's just not related to rollback at all. Okay, so let me just point out something, tell me what I'm missing then, because this is exactly the bidet conversation, right? Like where I want to make sure we're all, uh, I'm capturing what you're asking. So we're, the thing that gets signed is hello colon v1.0. And you could put hello colon latest and v1, you know, whatever the list of tags that you want. The verification is just saying that this was signed by registry.example.com. It's not making any statement on the, which the, the specific tags and so forth. What we did incorporate in here, which was really cool because I hadn't thought about this until I, I saw what he'd come up with, is you have this combination of the digest and the list of tags. The um, what regexes or what other OPA policies or other policies you put on looking at the the references and so forth, that's completely up to you guys and what uh, whatever the user wants to use here. So all we're saying here is that this thing is signed by the entity and it's not making any attestation to or you know a trust section of whether it's a v1 or v2 or v3 that's you know you in your deployment scripts you decide i want to deploy v1.0 i want to deploy v3 you might have a policy that says i won't deploy anything that it's hard to say less than with with tags but um uh, certain things you could exclude as part of your policy that's the the versioning history is not really in scope of what we're trying to accomplish is that what you were getting at Kind of. So I mean, the, the signature format clearly allows what I what I want to happen. Uh, the thing that the, the client tuning must also anticipate that and support that enough to be practical in the workflow. So if there is a verify signature step that just says fine, the image is pulled and run and the user is then tasked with somehow matching the the signature with the expectations that's difficult if the verification step explicitly requires the the reference to match then we will have to talk about how that is implemented what is the policy or how is it configured and if we do that together with the configuration that specifies the trusted truth keys or trusted CAs and so on, it is a much better user experience because it does logically belong together. So the thought process is security is multi-stepped, but it shouldn't be so complex. I, I agree with you. I obviously agree. I mean, what do you ultimately want as a user experience is to just say Docker pool register example com slash hello v10 and for the signature to be automatically downloaded, automatically verified, automatically enforced. Agreed. In the best case You're scenario, there, there are going to be complications. There, are, there is going to be configuration that needs to happen in advance. But uh, the best case scenario should be absolutely transparent. 100% so agree. 
So the, in I fact, we talked about doing like a Docker-NV2 client as part of the experience, but we were trying to be careful on how much experience we got into. What I, what I think you're kind of getting at is, think of it as this workflow that we could incorporate together. Um, there, imagine you had the first to just verify the signature is good. And then you had an, a policy manager that says, I only expect this. The policy manager could actually incorporate the signature part as well. I guess that's fair. So if I knew, we're just okay. kind of, you go ahead, Ralph. Well, no, so if I understand what's, what's being discussed and I, and I want to, so I'm gonna try. Um, basically what we're talking about here is componentizing each individual step that must be required in the manner that the end user, of course, expects them all to have been done. But this particular step you're demonstrating here really is just a portion of that. And the end user experience will have to have all of them in some form. We just haven't demonstrated what specific form yet. Does that seem fair? So for example, the, the, the question that I just heard was like, well, the Docker pull call is the user experience. So all of this has to happen inside that Docker pull call in some way, shape or form. Whereas what we're really doing is making sure that all those features are possible, where they end up in terms of the, doc, uh, the actual experience of the user is TBD, it's, it hasn't been you know, figured out yet. Is that, what do you think? Does that make sense based on what I'm hearing or am I out in left field somewhere? Maybe. The reason I ask is because it did sound to me like what we're saying here is that the verification at deployment time is simply not part of what we're seeing right now, right? What we're seeing right now is the signature capability. So from my perspective, thinking about like a matrix of stuff that isn't in this phase, for example, well, that would be one of the empty boxes. So it says nothing about the deployment verification of this. Yeah, I think that's a good way to approach this. Is that a, does that seem like it um, describes the world you feel like you're looking at? Once we get further along, and we're at time, so I'll, I'll, we'll wrap up here in a moment. We did want to demonstrate how OPA, for instance, as an example, could incorporate this as well. So we'll, we'll start to see some of these pieces more clearly come together. Um, but the, point you're point, the thing you're pointing out is exactly the kind of pieces that we want to componentize to make enabled through the experience. Uh, the problem is if we put too many of them together, then it gets overly complex just to start. Uh, and that's, in my personal opinion, like this is what Docker did really well, Docker Inc. and their CLI is it's, it's uh, progressively dis progressive disclosure. You start off by saying Docker run. You don't do a poll. You don't do anything. It just works. Uh, and then over time, you keep on passing more information to it and you get more and more value. So the first step here is it's just signed. It's, it's valid. It came from example.com. That's like the trust factor I want when I want to add additional policy, it says, hey, I don't want these other versions. I only want this version and these other things specific to it. That's a next piece we could layer in. And this has been the longest, the biggest part of the whole conversation the usability has got to be there. Security is only as good if it's usable. If I put 15 locks on the door and it's so difficult to open every time, somebody's going to jam a thing under the door to keep the door wedged open. Uh, and that kind of bypasses all security. So we want to make sure all that's incorporated in the usability. If there's nothing else, I, I do want to respect everybody's time. Um, we have the recording. We obviously have the issue up for uh, or the PR for people to comment on. So please do. We have the Slack channel for all kinds of conversations. Um, 
we'll discuss this week whether we want the 7 a.m. or go back to the 10 a.m. Pacific time. Sorry, I should use a more worldwide clock uh, definition. Um, so I really appreciate everybody's time for coming in at this time, and uh, we'll talk more about when we want to do next week. But keep the Slack conversations coming. Thanks, folks. I'll speak to you next week, or well, see you on Slack. Thank also, you. thanks for all the work. Yeah. Well, thanks, Shiwe. He's been uh, doing a ton, yeah. taking a lot of feedback. So thank you. Work helps. Work helps.